What's going on guys? Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcades video continuing on with the Buyer's Guide series to an arcade build from me. We're looking at the Pandora's boxes. So again, continuing with the whole buyer's guide, if you are looking to purchase an arcade cabinet from me, basically I'm sending these videos out to customers that are interested in an arcade cabinet and they don't really know what system they want and such. So first episode I did was a Raspberry Pi Retro Pi build, which I call the intermediate level. It is semi-user friendly. There's a couple of extra consoles and there's a, you know, a couple of hiccups that could happen along the way, such as if you don't shut down the system properly, you might break the system and stuff. Basically, to summarize things, there's three software options, system options, front-end options that you could get. The first one is the Pandora's Box beginner level. If you are getting your feet wet in the arcade game, if you're interested in an arcade cabinet and you want something super easy, the Pandora's Box is the way to go. Second is intermediate level, which is the Raspberry Pi Retro Pi build, which again... It has a little bit more features and games than what you can find in a Pandora's box, but it is a little bit, I'm not going to say the word difficult, but it is more tedious as far as navigating and the front end such. The last thing is the expert level, which is hyper swim builds. That is just, I, I knocked those out of the water. Those are mind blowing setups on hyper spin. But again, on this one today, we're going to be looking at the Pandora's boxes. I'll go over like the history of Pandora's boxes, what I've experienced, how I started. Really, that's how my business started was with Pandora's boxes. But I'll do that later on at the end because I don't want to talk too much. I'm going to basically turn this thing on. We're going to take a look at the front end. We're going to see how user friendly everything is. And we're going to take a look at basically the game count on it. Now, real quick, a quick note about Pandora's boxes. There is a legit company called 3A. They make real Pandora's boxes. Years go by, people have made knockoff pandora's boxes which that is in my hands right now this is a pandora's box 18s pro this is not a legit pandora's box but it is pandora's box labeled um that you can go in later on we'll go into like technical details but basically in my hand is a pandora's box now you might be looking at this like whoa vic what is this where what is that it's like a control panel can i get that um in all honesty, yes, you could find these on eBay. You find these very common on eBay. If you literally look up the word Pandora's box, you're going to find these control panels. These control panels, honestly, for me as a business, the guts are the only thing that's valuable. The buttons, the joysticks, it is pure trash on these. So um, I'll get into the side of it now. Basically, if you hit me up and said, hey, Vic, I want an arcade cabinet, but I don't know which one I want yet. Do you have like a test bench? Do you have maybe a cabinet I could borrow for a week just to see if I even want an arcade cabinet. I basically suggest all the customers to purchase one of these, which is the Pandora's Box control panel. You can find these on eBay for like 150 bucks, 180 bucks. Um, I have a guy that I have on eBay that I basically spend about 120 bucks um, for it. Um, so, you know, I, I built like 80 of these, so I get, I got a guy. <laughs> so, uh, basically, this is a good way to get your feet wet. Um, in all honesty, it's very simple. You plug it and play. It goes into an HDMI. You power it on. You flip the switch, and you have 4,500 games in here. Yes, in all brutal honesty, you're not going to have a great, enjoyable time because, again, the buttons and the joysticks, the hardware on this is pure trash. It is cheap buttons. It's cheap hardware. You might find a difficult time hitting a Duken on it. That's what you get for 100 bucks. Um, but the main thing really for me is the guts inside of this, the computer, the PCB board. So if you do actually want to go and buy one to test and just to see if you like it, I, again, I urge people to do that because some people want to know if there's certain games on this and if it'll play well. Um, I just say, hey, listen, buy it. It's 100 bucks. Go buy it. If you don't like it, you deal with returning it or you know, give it to your cousin to play with it. But again, it is a great little thing for like kids to beat up. But honestly... It's great to get your feet wet and check out the arcade emulation side of things. So now again, real quick, I'm going to flip the screen. We're going to, we're going to launch this thing basically with a flip of switch. System will turn on. Let's turn on Elgato and we'll check out the front end because I don't want to ramble too much. A customer is going to be looking at this and basically is going to be interested. So I currently run a Pandora's Box 18S Pro. Um, again, it is a knockoff Pandora's Box. The reason I run this one is because this does have... Let me lower this real quick. This does have Wi-Fi capability. Um, for some reason, on this specific unit I have in my hand, this little intro video sounds staticky via HDMI. But on my arcade builds, I always use the um, headphone jack, which sounds fine. 
Um, but basically, again, you literally turn on the system and it's going to load up. It's going to show you a front end, easy peasy, set and done. You literally flip the switch. That's what's so great about Pandora's boxes. It's very easy to use. You can literally plug it in. If you're done using it, you could unplug it. There's no shutdown script. It is very easy to use. As you can see, we're booted up. We have a nice little front end. We got a little video on the right side. We got a list of games. This, again, this unit has 4,500 games. You can see right here, there's 450 pages at 10 games a page. We are at 4,500 games. Pandora's boxes are great if you're looking for a business end, meaning if you want to put this in a cabinet inside of, let's say, a pizzeria to make money, Pandora's boxes is the easiest way. This does accept money. It does accept coins, or you could set it to free play. Me, personally, I always have this thing set to coins. Your arcade cabinet will have coin buns because it's coin slash select if you want the Raspberry Pi or the Hyperspin build route. Um, the reason I do keep this on coin play is because as you can see, there is a little video and then it's going to skip down to the next game. If I leave this thing set to free play, it's going to play this same exact video on a loop forever and ever. So one little tip. That's why I do put it as coin play. Um, again, Pandora's boxes have advanced through the years. They make new ones every year. So now that I put a coin in, I always send customers because people ask me, hey, Vic, is there a complete game list? Uh, I basically will send you a YouTube video of a guy that literally goes slowly and you can see each game. Um, but what's really great about this specific unit is that it doesn't only have arcade games. It even went into a couple of consoles. For example, the logo I have above my head is the PSP logo. We have PlayStation 1. This has the N64. We have the, I believe that's PC Engine. I, I might get my systems wrong. Please excuse me. The Super Nintendo. You got a Game Boy, which I thought was the Game Boy Advance. Might be the Game Boy Color. That one is the Game Boy Advance. This claims to have Xbox, but I really doubt that it, it has Xbox. Um, this, I believe, is the NEC engine or something like that, another, another Nintendo kind of console. We have a couple of Dreamcasts. We have Final Burn Alpha, which is an arcade emulator. We have MAME Arcade, which is our arcade emulator. And we're back to PSP. Right behind the webcam, you don't see it, but there is a timer. Once I put the coin in, you have 99 seconds to pick a game. Um, again, I'm not going to go through each game, but we're going to go now and talk about systems and games, and we're going to check out everything. We're going to launch one game, which, again, I'm a big Street Fighter fan. One button press on the control panel, which is usually button one, will basically load up the game. Sorry about that. I lifted up the control panel and I accidentally unplugged it. But basically, as you can see, we pick a game, quickly loads up, and it inserts the coin that we had. So um, it, this does play your classic Street Fighter. It'll have Pac-Man. It's got Metal Slug. It's got The Simpsons on it. Again, classic arcade stuff. So you could always add your coin and always insert player two. Easy peasy easy. So what's really great about the Pandora's box, basically, and I want to make sure that my volume levels are always good because I always mess this up in my videos. But as you can see right now with this little control panel, I do have arcade action in literally my lap. So it's pretty cool. I could hit a couple of Hadoukens. There we go. Not too bad. So as you can see, a lot of, you know, a big common favorite, Street Fighter and all that. What's really great about the Pandora's box system is that basically after three minutes, the system will automatically exit this game and go back to the front end, which is great. Again, you might have little kids, they kind of, you know, let the screen run and, you know, it doesn't exit. Like my Raspberry Pi, you have to actually exit the game, but this is pretty cool. After three minutes, it's going to exit back to the front end. Now we're going to get into the whole details, like how to navigate and stuff. You're tired of playing this game. You hold down player one start. I'm going to have to take out my webcam real quick just so you can see it. Basically, you have an option on the bottom left where it says button A is to insert a coin or button B is to exit a game. So if you put a bunch of credits in, as you can see, I'm adding credits as four. I could insert a coin by pressing A and you could hear the game added the coin. Or I just press button B and it exits me back to the front end. So what's really great, again, about this certain setup is that it does exit the system very easily by just pressing start holding down start um as you can see i have credits still in so i could still navigate the screen and such so as you can see at the top we do have the tab so there's all this has all your games then it has it by category 
which I see is basically systems. I'm basically using left and right on the joystick to jump the systems. It does have your recent game list, which is really cool, really useful for you to go quickly to find your recently played games. And the really great thing is that this does have a search function, almost like Hyperspin does, where basically you could search for a game. If you are searching, you know, if you want to play NBA Jam real quick, you could just simply search it. This honestly is great for people, again, if you had it in a retail space uh, and they want to search for a game. So as you can see here, I got NBA Jam, and we kind of see basically a soccer ball, which is basically showing that it's a sports game. One button press, button A, and pretty soon we're going to be playing some NBA Jam. There you go. And just a coin for you, you can press start. Actually, with this game, you need more coins. So as you can see, I'm entering more coins. I'm pressing start right now. It's not adding the credits. That's where I'm going to have to hold down start and press A button to insert more coins, as you could see. So that's why that little feature is there. And it does play NBA Jam pretty well. Uh, again, I always do that where I don't pick no. <laughs> Audio is good. You can definitely hear it. No stutter. Got baby girl next to me. Again, big classic. The only big thing about this, for example, in this certain situation, this NBA Jam is set to four player. So player two, if they were to join in on this, it would actually be side by side. Oops. Oh. All right, let's learn our button configs. So we got pass. Let's see. And got the shoot. So we're on the top three buttons for this. Not bad. So that's like the one thing when it comes to this unit specifically. You could actually put wired controllers to it for four, four player games such as this. But it is wired. It doesn't do wireless. So you can see now Pandora's boxes. We are getting four player action. Yes, you will need a wired controller for that. But... It's pretty cool to know that you have four player action. Take us to the house. Boom. Awesome. I hold down player one start. I press B. I exit the game. I have six credits that I could basically use. So again, pretty cool as far as Pandora's boxes. You could actually have the search function and you can search for any game you want. If I want to play some Galaga, I'm just going to look up some Galaga. That's honestly, this is the biggest feature that I do like about Pandora's boxes. I have people that they go, Vic, I just want to play Pac-Man. Okay, search it, and you'll find it. You can see here Galaga, and this so I'm going to go into now with Pandora's boxes. There's Final Burn Alpha and MAME Emulator. As you can see here, this is a vertical game, Galaga. And what's great about this certain one that I picked, it didn't stretch the screen. So as you can see, this is the current, the current, the correct aspect ratio for playing some Galaga. And again, I'm playing this with the buttons. Awesome. I'm going to exit real quick just to show you. If I go now, so that was Galaga Final Burn Alpha. Let's see if there's another Galaga. Uh, uh, do I have a main Galaga? I don't. Galaga 88 is not the same. But as you can see on the left, you see the Final Burn Alpha, the F logo, and then the M logo. Basically, MAME is set to like widescreen stretch. So some people like it, some people don't. There are, yes, duplicates. That's the one downside when it comes to Pandora. That there are many duplicates in this. So 4,500 games, you do have a lot of duplicates. I do want to get a real Galaga, but at least you kind of see this kind of stretch. So I'm going to do Pac-Man real quick now. As you can see, we have two Pac-Mans. Pac-Man Final Burn Alpha, Pac-Man MAME. Okay. If I launch the Final Burn Alpha, it is correct aspect ratio. It's not stretched. Seems okay. Again, as you can see, we are playing our main arcade classics. Again, if you're the type that just wants to play Donkey Kong, I want to play Pac-Man. Again, this definitely will play it. This definitely has it. I'm going to hold down start. I'm going to exit the game. And I'm going to launch real quick the MAME emulator. MAME that I notice is basically set to full screen. This will stretch, as you can see. It's Pac-Man. This is really original Pac-Man. The one that we played before was Mrs. Pac-Man. But as you can see, this is stretch. So some people, they really don't like this stretch. Like me personally, I don't, I don't like this stretch. Let's do it. Oh, 
But as you can see, we are playing our regular classics and stuff. We're going to exit out. Now, this is the one thing about Pandora's boxes. Yes, we have 4,500 games, but as you can see, there are a couple of duplicates and there are a couple of hacks. So, for example, we have Pac-Man with the hearts and then Pac-Man with speed up. So, the real common one that you will see a lot of duplicates is when you get into the fighting games such as Street Fighter. Um, you'll see a lot of duplicates. Um, you know, ones like, as you can see, Bootleg, Edition M6. Look at how many Championship Edition ones. So this is the one little downside that there are a lot of duplicates. World Warrior, there's three of them. USA Bootleg, there's seven of them. Um, only, honestly, the real downside to a Pandora's Box build is that you're going to find a couple of duplicates. Yes, it is annoying, but it's really, it's really not a deal breaker in my opinion. Um, again, you do have as far as classics, and I'm again I'm focusing on the arcade side of it. Um, if I want to do, let's say, The Simpsons, and again I'm I'm using the search function a lot. Do do do. We're gonna need a P. As you can see, Final Burn, we have Simpsons, and there's also two player Simpsons, Final Burn, four player Simpsons. So. I'm going to do the two-player one because I have two arcade sticks. Two-player one is great for two arcade sticks because you could change and select your characters. Whereas the four-player version, you would need the extra controllers. Player three is always um, Bart. Player one is always Marge and Homer and all that. So, as you can see, player one, I could pick. I didn't press player two start. I pressed a bunch of coins by accident. <laughs> Easy, cool, awesome. And again, this is always set to full screen. I'm gonna kick some butt with Homer. As you can see on the player two side on the top right, it says insert coin. I press start, it inserted the coin. I could press start and now I could select our character. And now we got some two player action going on. It's always difficult to play two arcade sticks <laughs> together. So easy. Again, this will play your arcade classics. You want TMNT, you want Metal Slug. I'm very, very sure it will have it. Will this have Killer Instinct? I do not think it does. So it's almost like our Raspberry Pi builds. As you can see, this does have Killer Instinct N64 and the Super Nintendo, but it does not have the arcade version. That you do need a PC build for. Let me go now into like the biggest thing that always shocks me when it comes to Pandora's boxes is that this does play PSP. We have Tekken 6. I'm going to launch Tekken 6 because I couldn't believe that this had Tekken 6. A pretty graphic intense game. I don't know if you saw that real quick, but at the top of the screen, it said five minutes remaining. So this is not an arcade game. This is now console. This is an actual PSP game. Uh, and what's crazy about the PSP, that was a handheld. This, if I do press player to start, if I do pick the um, uh, to, to do the challenge battle, um, it actually will automatically, as you can see right now, I'm not doing anything. It is adding player two, like wirelessly, because again, PSP was a handheld unit. As you can see right now, it's it's pretty cool. It's it's doing its thing. Uh, let it do its thing. As you can see, would you like to challenge player two? I'm gonna press button one. And we right now are going to get two-player action on a PlayStation, a PSP. Really cool. I'm just looking at my Elgato to make sure it works okay. And again, this is what's, you know, it's crazy because it's an advantage to the, to the Raspberry Pi. But as you can see, it, it's pretty mind-blowing. I'm still mind-blown by it. And it looks pretty good. And it does play fairly well. So Tekken, you have to actually be moving for you to get hit kind of thing so if you're sitting still it'll always block but as you can see if i am able to wail out again it, look at i'm psp and we're using arcade sticks i don't have wireless controller set up to this dumb using the arcade sticks on this very cool i'm gonna hold down button one start and i'm gonna exit and we're back i mean again metal slug xx it does have a couple of games. I do know for a fact, for example, this NBA 06 doesn't work. I always disable it now since my history. Uh, shout out to Casa and uh, Bodego. Um, he basically told me, hey, Vic, this game doesn't work. Basically, 
it's mapped to the analog stick and it won't work, so I just disable it. But just to see like PSP on arcade sticks, it's it's still mind blowing to me. I mean, we'll load up some Street Fighter Alpha three. Why not? And again, it's a PSP game. Now I keep forgetting. As you can see, it says five minutes remaining. This is a console game. This doesn't take quarters in real life. This is just a game that you play. Um, yes. So what Pandora's Box did is that basically they have it set to a timer. Um, so after five minutes, the screen will pause and it'll tell you to insert more coins. It gives you one minute to insert more coins and it basically adds time. Right now we have a bunch of coins in the system. So if I keep pressing start, do I have coins in the system? I do. Holding on player one start, I press button A. As you can see, now I have nine minutes. If I do it again, I got 14 minutes. So it adds five minutes. And again, we're using arcade sticks to play a PSP game. And again, what's pretty shocking with this, honestly, is that not really much stutter, not really much lag. Uh, it's definitely noticeable. Check this out. Well, this is like a. Well, this is this is max. Oh. Now you do kind of see a little bit of graphical. You could take a look at Ryu. He's got like this kind of line going through him. I mean, it is what it is. But not too bad, honestly. The only thing kind of I'm noticing right now is the bottom row is the punches. Uh, but again, that is PSP. And cool. We're going to exit out. So again, this does play a couple of consoles. I'm going to get out of PSP because I'm talking about PSP too much. Um, I do want to show you this one, which is very common. Um, if I go to category and I go to Dreamcast, people do ask, does this play Cap Marvel vs. Capcom 2? And as you can see in this Pandora's box, it is labeled Cartoon Hero vs. Capcom 2. So if you were going to go to the search function and look up Marvel vs. Capcom 2, you wouldn't find it because they misnamed it. But I'm going to launch this because, again, this is a very popular game. This is, though, the Dreamcast version. Just like how my Raspberry Pi build was, this is the Dreamcast version. So we're going to let this run a little bit because this is a very popular game. People are always asking me about it. This is the first time I'm launching Dreamcast, so you do get that little screen. Not going to try to do any skips really on this. And as you can see, we do have five minutes remaining because, again, it is a console and it does set it up to basically a timer, which is really cool. I actually have one customer that has this set up for his kids, and he puts like 30 minutes in it, and then that's it. After 30 minutes is up, that's it. It's time for bed. I think it's pretty cool. I accidentally pressed start. Do I let it load up? Pressing start. Awesome. So again, just like how I did my other video, we're going to run a couple of characters. Let's see how it plays. Bump the volume a little bit. I used to spam cable. <laughs> uh, we'll do Wolverine. So now again, as I always stress... With like this Dreamcast, this isn't the arcade emulator. So pressing the top three buttons will not launch a super. Only the real arcade emulator or real arcade one will. So as you can see, with cable, we do have a little bit of the pixelation that we do witness with um, Raspberry Pi builds. I used to always do this in the arcade emulator, just spam his gun. <laughs> But not too bad. In all brutal honesty with this, and I don't like it, um, the buttons you have to kind of get used to. And not to mention, I think it's only five buttons that work. Button six is doing nothing right now. Oh, no. Button six is calling Wolverine. Let's see if I could launch a super. That's the only big thing is like you just have to kind of figure out your button combination to launch the super. There we go. So not too bad. Not too much of an audio stutter. I don't want to talk too much. So you can at least hear it. Okay. 
Oh. Oof. It's got the same character as me. Oh, that was bad. People watch me like, Vic, you don't know how to play. <laughs> Again, give me the regular arcade emulator and I'll be good on this. Oh, I almost launched a super. But, as you can see, this is Cartoon Heroes <laughs> versus Capcom. We're going to exit out, holding the player one start. And, again, it's... It's come a it's come a long way on us with these Pandora's boxes. So let's real quick check out this Xbox, which I doubt is it is Xbox. What is that? Life Quick Typing Two. That looks like Mortal Kombat to me. Huh. So that's like the that's like the funny thing. Also, you can see that are like the names are a little bit way off. Wow, that's not even RoboCop. It's Robot Operations Police. Simpsons Family Bart. Interesting. I never really ventured into the Xbox side of this. Maybe it is Xbox One. But the real kind of cool thing, if I do go into, like, let's say, um, Super Nintendo or even the N64, actually, let me jump into that. Because this has NFL Blitz, N64, and I'm always mind blown by the performance of NFL Blitz on this. So I'm going to real quick use the search function. I'm going to look up NFL Blitz. So as you can see, we have N64. I'm going to play a little bit of Blitz because I said it in all like my arcade vid videos you'll see. I'm just mind blown that this plays NFL Blitz. And it plays it fairly well. Um, brutal honesty. As you can see, we have five minutes remaining. Let's press start. <sighs> do some arcade play. And this does work with two players. So you, get, you could do two-player arcade. I could just press start. I have five minutes. So I'm going to add a couple of coins. I'm going to hold down start, insert a coin. Hold down start, insert a coin. A lot of holding down the start, that's really the only thing. There's no hot keys and all that. Oh, I didn't even realize that was the Buffalo Bill. All right. Now, the only thing now is like, you got to kind of figure out, oh, wow. <laughs> now we just got to kind of figure out what's our run button. What's our pass button and stuff, but most commonly pass is button one. Oh wow. <laughs> Way to embarrass myself on my own channel, but here we go. Let's just see, I'm trying to figure out the run button on this. Oh god, that's awful. I'm doing horrible. It's two thirty in the morning. <laughs> Oof. Oh, that was just bad. That was just bad. <laughs> but as you could hear, like, no audio stutter. Beautiful. Very surprised with it. Got the jump. I got the hurdle. And I just got taken out. That's always, like, the first game. You got to kind of figure out your button assignments and stuff. Okay, let's not get wrecked. Great. Two-yard run. Nothing. Got our pages. Oh, deflected. <laughs> last one. Last one, and then I'm not going to embarrass myself anymore. That's it. Embarrassing myself. Holding down player one start, and we're going to hit B to exit. Again, you do have now a couple of consoles. The main games, honestly, you know, and you got Super Nintendo. As you can see, there is four pages, so it's 40 and uh, Super Nintendo games. Um, yeah, Mario World, Ninja Frog, Royal Knight, Super Bomber, Super Mario, cool. I mean, again, basic stuff, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Advance, Xbox, NEC, Dreamcast. But again, honestly, you are going to want this Pandora's box because of arcade stuff. This is to get your arcade feet wet. Again, you do have your common fighters. You can see all the street fighters we have there. Shoot 'em ups um, you know, beat em ups, everything's there. So again, basics on Pandora's box.
cool note about the Pandora's box that I I don't really use too much, but if I hit the settings button, um, it'll bring up this nice little menu. What's really cool about this is that there is an I/O test. Um, you basically could check to make sure all your buttons are working, which is pretty cool. Very you know great feature. Um, you know if you ever question, hey Vic, one of my micro switches is dead. How can I test it? The Pandora's box does have a function that you could actually check it out. Um, as you can see, there is a gamepad setting, so you could add the wired games to it. Um, big thing here, I could, you could change your coin settings, how to exit. But the reason I came here really is because this does have Wi-Fi. Um, you are able to connect to Wi-Fi, and it does have a game market so if i do go into the game market and i haven't touched i haven't looked at this honestly too much but um apparently we got a game market you basically could download a bunch of games which on my understanding like this this menu that i entered in the games are already on the system i think it's more about like um you know maybe you want more psp games uh as you can see we have a list. WWE All Stars actually very important. I don't think that has it. So let's just see if I could download it real quick. I'm gonna install it because I don't think my list has WWE All Stars. I'm gonna let that kind of download. But it is pretty cool to know that you do have, um, basically a a, a market. Uh, you know, I don't know how frequently they update this. Um, but as you can see, I'm able to download a game. You can search for a game. Contra Knights. Let's see. These are all arcade ones. But as you can see, a little bit of an advantage. This does have a Wi-Fi antenna, and you could download games. I'm going to just try one of these Xbox buttons, because really, honestly, that is your Pandora's box system. Um, again, it's very super user-friendly. All I'm really doing to navigate stuff is basically holding down player one start and either pressing a to insert coins or b to exit the game um there are a couple of um systems that will actually let you save and load states which is pretty cool to see let's just see this right now i picked xbox uh nostalgia all day yep <laughs> Play this on, I believe, the Genesis. I had this on the Genesis. This was a three button game. Button C would drop. Yep, you would get the whole police call. It's awesome. I mean, it is It is what it is. It's pretty cool. And again, the only big thing to keep in mind is that because this is set to coin play, you do have a timer on this. I'm going to exit out. Um, but there's honestly your basic rundown on a Pandora's box. Now, again, what's really great with this is that you could literally just flip the switch and that's it. You don't have to worry about a shutdown or did I shut it down right? You literally could just flip the switch. If I flip the switch back on, it'll turn on. So again, if you do have an arcade cabinet, you could unplug it. The screens will go off, plug it in, it'll boot. Um, the funny thing, and I actually have a, a bodega guy messages me. He goes, hey, Vic, every time I launch Pandora, it shows this. This it looks like Street Fighter V. How can I get this game on my Pandora's? And I'm like, no, it's just an intro. It's You're not going to get Street Fighter V on a Pandora's box. Um, again, this specific unit right now, for some reason, has a weird HDMI audio intro thing. But other than that, again, you turn it on, give it, you know, 30 seconds. And next you know, you're into it. I do know that once it gets into this this main screen here, it still needs about 15 seconds. I put a coin in right now. And it still didn't register it because it's still technically loading. You know, you got to give it some time to load up. And basically, once you hear the bip, there you go. Now it registered it. So I don't know how many seconds that was, but yeah, there you have it. Honestly, that is your Pandora's box. Now, for the people that want to stick around, I'll tell you the history of it. Again, um, I started with a Pandora's box, uh, Pandora's box 4. It was an actual JAMA board system. Um, you know, that's just how old school it is. multi and stuff was Jamaboard board had a very big connector. You plug it in. That's how my, that's how I learned arcade side of it. Now, like these, these don't have Jamma boards. They have something called like a home harness or something like that. Uh, basically it's just a smaller connector. Um, are these interchangeable and swappable? Yes. 
uh, you let's say a new Pandora box comes out and you want to swap it, you can just basically buy a new board and put the controller connector in and call it a day. Um, so I shot this honestly a couple of times and I said to myself, I, I shot it before and I was like, I was rambling. I wanted to get through first showing off the games and stuff for a customer. But um, basically, yes, somebody, somebody said, Vic, you're going to like take this and cut it up. Like that seems like a ripoff. No, it's, it's a Pandora's box. If you look up the price of a Pandora's box alone, just the board alone, it's like a hundred bucks without a wire harness, without a power brick. For what I pay um, my guy on eBay is 130 bucks. I get everything here. The only downside to it, again, is that these buttons are cheap. They're horrible. But the wire harness that's in this is very short. Uh, I have a video coming up. Um, actually, I'll, t- I'll tell you a quick story about it. So the DJ that did my wedding, uh, Magic Moments, I gifted them a bar top for a great job they did. And I give them a bar top with a Raspberry Pi build on it. Gave it to him. The guys at the job were playing it and all that. Um, sure enough, Sal messaged me. He goes, "Hey Vic, man, we love the gift you got us, man, but it's just complicated. You know, we're trying to just play some Street Fighter, and I have to go into you know the arcade wheel into the main wheel. I got to look for Street Fighter." He's like, "Vic, I need something more easier, um, much easier, I should say." And I said, "Damn, I should have put a Pandora's box." This, I mean, I got married two years ago, right? I gave him the gift two years ago. He gave me the heads up, like, I don't know, maybe six months later. I get a message from Sal. He goes, Vic, man, and this is what the next video you're going to see, the next arcade build coming up. Sal's daughter wants an arcade cabinet for their beach house. He goes, hey, Vic, my daughter, she loves the bar top. She wants her own arcade cabinet. But, Vic, man, please, you got to give me a simpler system. So this one actually is going into Sal's arcade cabinet that I'm going to be building him. So, um, again, that's where I gave somebody an intermediate level thing, and it was like it was too complicated. Um, a while back, I did a guy's uh, Game Room Solutions cabinet. He had a Raspberry Pi build. He only wanted Pac-Man, and he actually bought the Game Room Solutions plug and play kit. And he messaged me, goes, "Vic, man, this thing's a it's, it's a headache. I just want to play Pac-Man." And basically, I gave him a Pandora's box and just put Pac, you know, he just searched Pac Man and he was way happy. So sometimes getting the more expensive stuff, uh, you know, jumping to the pa- Raspberry Pi, yes, you get more games, but you do get a little bit more of a headache. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Pandora's boxes are just so easy. Um, so going back, anyway, inside of this, basically, there is a harness. And on um, my next video that I'm going to make, because I'm going to teach you guys how you could buy this. And then how you could put it into an arcade cabinet. The only thing to keep in mind is that I like real arcade buttons. I do like my real micro switch buttons. So there are buttons like how this unit is. I believe they're called Sandwall buttons where there's not really a micro switch. It's built into it. I don't like these buttons. I, I just don't like them. That's just my personal thing. Aside from this cheap one, like you could buy a kit of Sandwalls. I don't really like them. Um, but the big thing is that the, the connectors, the actual metal connectors to plug in to the button are smaller than my regular micro switch connectors. So you're going to see in the video, basically, there's going to be two, two kind of ways to do it. Easy ways to basically unplug it and then put it, unplug the micro switch, this button, and put it to another sandwall button. Or do what I do where I actually cut and splice, extend the wire and stuff. So somebody messaged me was like, hey, Vic, I don't think that's right, man. You, you, you're upselling a Pandora's box. No, I'm not. There's a lot more work to it. You just see this. But I cut, splice, heat shrink. I got to make sure that this thing is good to go. Not to mention the control panels on my arcade cabinets fold up. You got to make sure wires are long enough. Something could disconnect. There's a lot more work to it. So to that person that goes, hey, Vic, I think it's not right that you're selling or refacing a $130 unit. There's more to it than just that. But anyway, I mean, again, I'm kind of rambling. This is a ramble part. But uh, again, start out with Pandora's boxes. You could go back on my YouTube channel. You'll see like my first videos where I was standing next to bar tops. I used to do Pandora's box fours. And the real legit company is 3A. Their current Pandora's box is the DX. Um, I think that's at like 3,500 to 4,000 games. This is the 18S Pro. This does have the Wi-Fi market. Maybe the DX has Wi-Fi. I don't know. 
but I so far have put about eight of these in and I've yet to get a call about any of them bricking and stuff. So I like them. Again, it is very user friendly. If you are getting your feet wet into the RK game, if you even if you're trying to modify an RK one up, which is honestly why I'm going to be making the video on how to take this and put it in an RK one up or in an RK cabinet, you got to start somewhere. I started out with Pandora's boxes, and now I'm up to 40 terabyte hyperswim drives. But um, other than that, basic arcade talk, basic arcade ramble. If you are looking for a unit and you want something super user friendly, easy to navigate, to let the kids play, to get a nostalgia trip, I can't recommend the Pandora's box enough. It is just that easy. VicVP, Game Case Arcades.